Welcome back to the booth. We are at Velocity 2011, and I'm joined now by Jonathan Heiliger, VP of Technical Operations at Facebook, and he's here to chat with us a little bit about the Open Compute Project. Jonathan, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, Appreciate thanks for having me. So what are your hopes for the Open Compute Project? Well, really, we launched the project with the hopes of accelerating innovation in, in hardware and also demystifying a lot of what it takes to actually scale and uh, scale very efficiently and at low cost. And the, the, really the third element of opening the Open Compute Project up was to get people collaborating and talking about what it would actually take to scale infrastructure and scale data centers out in the open rather than uh, sort of doing it all uh, off on the side. And, uh, when we made the announcement, I sort of used the analogy of Fight Club that uh, <laughs> most people treat their data centers like Fight Club. We don't sure. talk about them, but we all have them. And so the first rule of open compute is you talk about open compute. <laughs> Fight Club, I like it. Uh, so it's been a little over two months, yeah. and I know that's not a huge sample size, but how has the pro uh, project evolved over that brief time? So the, the project's evolved a bit, but really we've been uh, working with a lot of end users and a lot of other people like ourselves, web companies, uh, cloud service providers, and others, um, getting gathering their feedback and making the, the kind of the designs and specifications even better. Um, the most notable is probably companies like Rackspace who have decided to shift their whole construction for a new data center to uh, use the open compute standards, as well as a couple of people in financial services, guys like Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. uh, are taking a really close look at uh, the, the platform and the specifications, figuring out even how they can already contribute IP, uh, intellectual property, back to the specifications. So would the open compute project have happened without having built the prime build data center from the ground up? Yeah, I think, I think it would have. I mean, yeah. we, we absolutely could have built our own hardware and, and, and put that hardware into uh, anyone else's data center. And in fact, we've, we've actually done that in a couple of instances for testing and, and other types of things. But as I talked about this morning at Velocity, you know, we really looked at the combination of software, servers, and data centers and really thought that optimizing across that entire pipeline was the, the way to essentially maximize our efficiency. And the net result for us was, was pretty significant. It was a 38% gain in efficiency and a 24% uh, cost improvement relative to what we were buying previously. And we were able to do that because we built a data center, built the hardware, and tuned the software to work with all of right, those. Right. So kind of expanding this a little bit, what is the trickle down effect of efficiency and optimization for the end user? Well, I think you know there's some immediate short-term benefits, which are that um, because the infrastructure is more efficient and uh, more economical, uh, companies like Facebook can afford more infrastructure, which then in turn reduces load times for, for end users and makes for a more reliable computing experience. Long term, we think that you know, the, the, sort of the, the possibilities for innovation are boundless. We're, we're putting out components and abstractions that people can take, and they're going to build fantastic new things that we have no idea what, of what they look like yet. Now, you've been at Facebook during a period of massive growth. What types of mindsets have you had to adopt to sort of deal with that level of scale? Uh, I think the, the, the first mindset is just the, you know, the mindset of planning, which is there's no historical data from which to, you can lean on. Sure. And so there's just a lot of intuitive, <laughs> and a lot of intuitive right. judgment. Uh, but so this morning I shared a couple of lessons that we, we've learned, and I'll just re I'll repeat them briefly, uh, which is just you know, sort of make really audacious bets and be willing to even kind of increase those bets, if you will where you know, I, I thought we had made big bets on capacity and other things, and it turns out the product we worked even better and users uh, took to it even, uh, right. even more than, than we thought, which is phen phenomenal. The other thing I think that has allowed us to also maintain this startup culture and, and really move very quickly is to have really small teams of people and empower those small teams of people um, to do sort of whatever they need to go do rather than um, buying them down with lots of other people and having to manage all those communication mm -hmm. uh, points, just keeping, keeping teams small. And then the, 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 one of the other points I made this morning was just this concept of making it work, sort of make do with what you have, sure. rather than trying to sort of innovate to an engineer to perfection. Release something out into the wild, and I think that's a, that's a theme that has gained a lot of momentum here, thanks to Velocity over the years, this concept of, of dev to ops and very quick iteration in the software world. We've not only applied that to the software world, but we've applied it to our organization, and we've now applied it to hardware, which is sure. something very, very different. All right. So last question for you. Yeah. You mentioned this a little bit, but is it reasonable to expect that large companies can continually think of themselves as startups? You know, I think it's, it's a real challenge. It, ab it absolutely takes a lot of energy and inertia um, to prevent that, that sort of feeling, that vibe um, from leaving. And I think if you don't actively work on it, it, it will naturally sort of leave the building as mm. companies grow and scale. Because you go from having 
everyone's sitting on one floor and you kind of feel this sure. energy and everything right. feels really good, kind of like the, the show floor here, to you have multiple, you have multiple rooms and then multiple buildings and then offices all around the world. And it's just hard to maintain the pace and consistency uh, you know, across, um, across all of those, those, those places. Um, some of the unique things we've done is that um, you know, we also have um, an engineering boot camp that every new engineer at the company goes through, whether you're a VP coming from another large company mm -hmm. or a fresh college grad. And so having that commonality of experience and exposing people to all different parts of the code base um, equalizes the playing for, floor and gives people you know, a chance to experience the back end code if they're front end developer or mm -hmm. vice versa, right? Um, and we, we, do, uh, we also have now systematized uh, a system of, it sounds bad, but we've systematized rotations, <laughs> if you will, uh, around the company where you can sort of move uh, and experiment with different teams of people. Um, it's called hack a month. Mm -hmm. So you can just take a month off and take a break and if you're working on mobile, maybe maybe you want to go work on online ops and you want to go work or, or you want to um, move from risk to uh, working on newsfeed, mm -hmm. that you can essentially just raise your hand and say, I want to try something different and I want sure. to spend a month doing it, which we think is enough time to go actually get some flavor, get some experience, but not so much that you, know, you kind of lose what you had going if mm -hmm. you decide to go back to your sure. old team. Great. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Thanks for being Thank Thanks for having me.